ladies and gentlemen. Now our uh, group networking forum will begin. Uh, our uh, networking, uh, uh, the title of our, our, our group forum is the Closed Ecological Life Support System Integration uh, Experiment for the Survival, Health, and Living in Deep Space Station. First of all, I will introduce the uh, the, the presenter, the first is uh, Dr. Ying Hui Li from the China Astronaut Center. He is the uh, chief, uh, vice chief engineer. Second is uh, Professor Nick Kanas. He is from the University of California, San Francisco. Here I want to remind of uh, this kind of things because uh, Professor Nick Kanas. Uh, uh, four days ago, just get a book award for his book, new book, Human in Space, the Psychological Holders. Uh, get this is a book award from the IAA, uh, IAA uh, Space Life Science Section. Uh, congratulations to the uh, Nick Kanas. <laughs> so there is uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Yixian Qing, he, he, he is a professor of Stony Brook University. Fourth is Dr. Petra Hefbox from the Institute of Aerospace Medicine, uh, DAR. Now, first of all, we will invite uh, Dr. Li Yinghui to give some introduction about the, this experiment, 180 days uh, uh, CLSS uh, integration experiment, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to have a presentation to introduce our work in uh, here, I would like some experiment recently. So we know for the two years, from last year to this year, for the human space flight, we have some new recording and some new dream. So people, the people they can state the flight time is about 1800 days. It's a so long time. Even it's not the one time, it's several times, but it's enough time for the stay in the space. And uh, the last month, you know, the C, he says experimental is uh, a space simulation mission. It, also as a isolation experiment uh, for the one year for the p six people in, in, in this simulation. So we say for the, for the future, the mass is not too long live away. If the people landing the mass in the 2030, only 15 years. But if it's, uh, even if the 50, 2050, only 35 year, years is so, the time is not too long away. Uh, three days before, uh, before the three days, the ex space director, Musk, they have amazing lecture, he said, he says they have four questions for the landing mass, but for the space medicine people, we say we still have another question is how we, for the people, how to have to easy life in the mass. So we would always, always think about for the people, what is the future of the space medicine? How to keep the people healthy? relaxing on the mass. So 
the people know even in the we have lots of problem even as micro gravity and the lower gravity we also have the risk of radiation also we have this owner of the circadians and some different magnetic element and even for the problem of the lunar or the marginal dust but we can show for the this time we can show the people can live even in the lunar or the mass but what life is we like we, where we get the food weather and the air so for this time we developed a, a by regeneration life supported and the health uh, and health maintenance technology in the space in the deep space explore, exploration. So for this long time exploration, we would like to explore the interaction of the human beings and the element. So here we set up a facility. This facility is uh, special for the controlled ecological life supported system facility. It for the controlled facilitator, but also applied for the experimental, for the human beings research. This facility, we have eight cabins. Four is for the uh, biology cabin, another one is for the resource cabins, another one is for the crew members, another two is for the crew members. It was 1,030, 40, millimeters. Here in this cabins up to now we have four crew members. We have 118 days isolation experimental. Uh, for this experimental we would like to food, water and air have a regeneration and the water faced, faced have the circle and the utilite lays. Also, this experiment, we have a long time isolation, and uh, even in this experiment, we have special sunlight time. It's one, one day time is more longer than the 40 days and the Earth time. And also, we have the, this uh, isolation, we have the physiology and psychological uh, effects. Also, we have twist Chinese Tai Chi for the uh, countermeasured to the mood of the people. Here is the five parts of the experiment. Uh, in the last uh, the day before the yesterday, we have a special uh, lecture to introduce this part, so I'm not choose here one by one. So for this part is for the, uh, between the psychological and the physiological variation and uh, the uh, mental effect and another one is during the long time, what is changed, special for the biorhythm and sleeping. And another one is we have lots of work is for the epilogic. Another one is for the way we Tai Chi to modify the mood state and the regulation. Here, today is the one uh, 105 days. So I will show the video, please. technology and extraterrestrial living. Space exploration has been a common pursuit of all humankind. In The Martian, Mark Watney showed you how to survive on Mars. And in Space Enter, we present you how to live on Mars. Space Enter, a four subject and 180 day integrated experiment of controlled ecological life support system. It's a large multinational human environment interaction experiment organized in Shenzhen, China. The experiment is operated in an integrated self-experimental facility, which is newly built in Space Institute of Southern China. The facility is formed with four categories of eight cabins, namely four planned cabins, two crew cabins, one life support cabin, and one resources cabin. It covers an area of 370 square meters with a capacity of 1,340 cubic meters. It contains 14 subsystems ranging from environmental control, cyclic regeneration, to information management. 
The facility can support a SELS experiment with six crew members for over one year. The four subject and 180 day experiment focuses on studies on controlled ecological environment technologies and researches on human environment interaction. Validation on controlled ecological life support system integrated technology aims at improving recyclability rate of substances, mainly includes plant cultivation and management, solid waste treatment and reusage, air regeneration and regulation, and water cycle management. Before the start of 180-day manned experiment, the facility has completed troubleshooting, include manned 5-day test and manned 10-day test, and a 40-day simulated unmanned test, which realized the transition from physichem regeneration to bioregeneration and established manned experimental conditions. The experimental facility also functions as a medical research facility for human environment interaction studies, which indicate studies on the adaptation process and mechanism of human rhythm changes when shuttling between Earth and Mars. Epigenetic study during long-term confinement. The varying pattern of crew members, metabolomics, and gut microborne in the condition of planned diet and exercise during long-term confinement. The psychological effects of long-term confinement to crew members. The adaptability of cardiovascular function and its relationship with behavior and metabolism under long-term confinement. And exploration of an innovative health monitoring and maintenance technology utilizing traditional Chinese medicine. Upon Space Center, we establish a data hub by integrating the long-term health data of all crew members. And all physiological data psychological data, and multi-omics data from body fluids are integrated and stored in the data hub, which facilitates international data sharing, mining, and collaborations. Currently, the crew are living and working in Mars time, and the operation team are conducting the biorhythm study. The experiment has completed. Thank you. For this experiment, we think about something is one point is about we think the plants have a magical and unique role. It's not only balance CO2 and uh, urgency, not only for trans, trans, uh, uh, trans future water and uh, the important thing is keep health. It can make life better, life relaxing, and lack more healthy. For uh, as you know, so for the Chinese, we know we could get those benefit from traditional medicine. We have Ben Cao Gang Mu. In this book, we have lots of plants. It have healthy work. So. Maybe in the future for the mass, we see electro for the plants is a beautiful medicine plants garden. We can, people can take the air, take water, and also take health from the plant. Another part is we think in the mass, the people were searching a special, simpler, a uh, special simplification solution for the complex system is more simple, not too complicated. So the people can find a, suiter, a suitable life. And the third one is the people can dig poten poten uh, potential of human beings' uh, selves. We could, in the traditional Chinese, we know the, the animal face have lots of work, work as a medicine for the health. So for the future, maybe the human beings, we can do lots of work for the interstate uh, inter macroecologic work for, from health. So maybe for, for the future, people can get more and more from self. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I think uh, we will discuss uh, after the all of pressing presentation is completed. Next speaker is Professor Nick Kanas. Uh, Professor Nick Kanas, uh, next to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I was asked to speak about some of the psychological and interpersonal crew type issues that might affect people in simulation, and I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about some of the research that's been done and also uh, about uh, maybe what could be done in the future in planning for Mars. Uh, space is not the Earth. Uh, the, the forces that affect people in space uh, may be different than the ones that affect people on Earth. Uh, and so it's important to examine the psychological and crew uh, interactions to see what happens and how it may be the same or different uh, on Earth so that we can plan for a future mission. What do we know from on-orbit space missions? Well, uh, over many years, my colleagues in Russia and our team in the United States have studied the a series of uh, missions to the Mir space station and to the International Space Station. And we studied a total over the years of 30 American and Russian uh, space travelers, astronauts and cosmonauts. And because we're interested in groups of people, we also studied teams in mission control on the ground uh, in terms of um, how the crew interacted, but also in terms of how the mission control teams interacted with each other and with the crew. We were interested in uh, all of these aspects. So we studied people on the ground, both in uh, uh, the United States and again in Russia, in mission control. We used um, standardized measures that we had programmed into the computers on the Mir and then on the International Space Station where the uh, subjects, uh, the astronauts, cosmonauts, and people on the ground would fill out every week uh, uh, a series of questions related to uh, emotional state for that week. Uh, the POMS is a profile of mood states. It's a standardized psychological test that's been used in hundreds of studies on the ground. Uh, and we had it translated into Russian as well as in English. The POMS, you can see, has a number of uh, dimensions such as tension, anxiety, uh, or uh, depression. And so we can monitor levels of tension and depression week by week by week uh, uh, during the Mir or the International Space Station missions. The global uh, environment scale, GES, and the work environment scale, WES, uh, were measures not of mood but of crew interactions and the questions all s had to do with what the climate was like in the team. So we could study things like cohesion, study things like uh, anger, leader uh, con uh, direction, uh, and work pressure. Uh, we could track it week by week by week. And so that's what we did is we studied a number of emotional and crew group level issues over time. The results of the study, there are four areas that we're interested in. One was what happens over time to the crews. The missions were generally four to seven months long. Uh, one thing we were interested to see is whether we saw a drop in morale uh, in the third quarter. There's been a lot of reports in the Antarctic that in the third quarter, halfway, just after halfway, crew members become uh, depressed or morale drops. We wanted to see if we could find it. And in fact, we did not find this, even though we thought we would. Uh, no time effects. It didn't matter which phase of the mission it was. The crew members pretty much remained stable uh, in their mood and in their inter interactions. We think this is probably due to the fact that mission control gave a lot of support to crews. Whenever they got a little depressed, they could talk to their families uh, almost any time they wanted in privacy, or they could talk to the counselors in mission control. So we did not find any drop in morale in the third quarter. In terms of the interactions, we're interested in the phenomenon of displacement. Displacement is, you all know about displacement, when you can't tell your boss, your boss is after you and making you do too much work and you're mad at your boss. You can't tell your boss you're mad at him. You go home and instead you get mad at your wife or your husband or somebody who's innocent to relieve the tension. 
Uh, astronauts, we thought, do the same thing. When they have tension on board, they can't tell each other off when they're mad because their whole life depends on each other. So what they do is they displace some of their anger to the ground. And in fact, we found evidence for that phenomenon occurring. In, in, in a number of, uh, during the weeks that the crew members reported high levels of tension and mood uh, dysregularity, those are the same weeks that they perceived the ground as not being supportive, and these findings were statistically significant. So we think that the crew members displace their tension to people on the ground when they have tension on board. By the way, what I'm saying goes for any kind of an isolated group. Any group of people in isolated and confined conditions might exhibit these same phenomena. We looked at the heterogeneity. We did find some uh, cultural differences between Americans and Russians. Uh, generally, the Russians reported higher levels of tension on, on, the, on the space missions, and the Americans reported higher levels of work pressure. We think this might be due to the fact that the American space program has a lot of requirements of things to do, and the Russian space program has fewer requirements. When something goes wrong, they call the expert, and the expert t helps them take care of the problem. So there were some cultural differences, but we think more than the, the nation, these might have been due to the way that the different space agencies operate their programs. Finally, in terms of leadership role, um, the uh, people have talked about two roles of a leader, uh, the, getting the job done, the task role, and helping the emotion state of the crew and helping morale, the uh, support role. We found that both roles were very important for cohesion. They correlated with cohesion in space. Only the support role correlated with cohesion. That is, commanders who were very supportive, those were um, uh, crews that were judged to be high in cohesion. Uh, we, don't, we didn't find it with the task role because we feel that in our studies, unfortunately, we only had three-person crews, and everybody is the leader in a three-person crew. You have the commander, you have the engineer, who is the leader in the engineering tasks, and then you have the mission specialist, who is the leader in the, in the payload. So because the role of leadership was dispersed across all members, we think that that washed out the effect of leadership. Now, I should mention that um, your colleagues in China, uh, Wang and Wu in Beihang University on the Lunar Palace One, uh, replicated our findings. They used the same measures that we used in our space studies, translated them into Chinese, uh, and found in a similar way uh, the same findings. They found no third quarter phenomenon. They found a tendency to displace tension to the outside monitors, and they found a tendency of uh, correlation between the support role of the leader uh, and the um, uh, people on the outside uh, uh, and the cohesion in the group. So there was a nice replication in another culture, in another language even, uh, of some of our findings. They used the same measures, which was good, because then we could compare uh, findings across time with the same measures. Now I'll conclude with just a couple comments about a mission to Mars, because I think a mission to Mars will be different. The mission Going to Mars would be a two and a half year mission. Uh, the crew will be truly isolated and truly uh, a long way from home. So I think some of the factors that we found may become uh, apparent, but also maybe more so. The isolation of going to Mars might affect the crew even more than in, on orbit. There'll be more autonomy, which is new. The crew will truly be autonomous, unlike on orbit, where crew members interact a lot with people in mission control. A Mars crew will have to plan their own schedule. There will be a time delay. If somebody wants to speak with his husband or wife on Earth, there's going to be a 25 minute on average time delay. You say, hello dear, how are you? You have to wait 25 minutes for the answer. It's not gonna be the same level of support that the on-orbit crews have, and so that might change some things as well. And finally, my colleague uh, and I have talked about the Earth out of view phenomenon. Uh, Dietrich Manzi and I have written about this. No human in this room have ever experienced the Earth as an insignificant dot in the heavens. In fact, no humans anywhere in time have ever seen the Earth. Everything that's important to them, their families, their history, their culture, is in that insignificant little dot way, way far away. We don't know what the psychological manifestations of the Earth out of view phenomenon will be. Uh, it may be nothing, it may be very profound, but it needs to be studied. So what can we do in the future? I think simulations such as you're hearing about today uh, with crews that are simulated perhaps for longer periods of time and uh, maybe uh, simulating a Martian a mission such as happened in Russia recently is important. I think we can use space as a Martian simulator. We can use the International Space Station to simulate 
the outbound and return phase and weightlessness of going to Mars. And we can use the moon or an asteroid captured and brought into cislunar orbit to simulate being on a, a hard rock body doing tasks there under partial gravity. But I think in time, we really need to start simulating these missions to Mars before we go to see if some of these factors will be different than what we know about on orbit. So thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nick Kanas. Next speaker is Professor Ching from the Stony University. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank organizer to uh, uh, have me here. So. Uh, I was asked to uh, present some uh, research work related to uh, basic science, uh, related to musculoskeletal uh, 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 alteration in space uh, condition. And uh, I will integrate uh, several studies, include the human, uh, include animal work, and also some uh, cellular work. So as we know, uh, the uh, space uh, is kind of a very challenged uh, environment. We have uh, many, many uh, uh, challenge related, uh, like a hash uh, environment, confined space, life support issues, adapt to uh, G gravity, uh, body flu shifting, uh, flu loss in space, bone loss and muscle atrophy, and radiation. Uh, I would just uh, focus on the other uh, bone loss uh, area and uh, try to um, uh, deliver some uh, basic science research uh, related to uh, uh, research in university and uh, institute site instead of uh, in the, the uh, research center in the NASA and uh, the other uh, space agency. So mechanical stimulation is one of very uh, uh, important signal to the human body. And uh, when athletes, uh, they exercise very um, uh, frequently, they are um, uh, play um, limb is uh, much stronger than, uh, than the uh, non-play limb. And in space, in average, about 2% uh, bone loss uh, in the long-term space mission, uh, especially for those bones at the, the weight bearing side, for example, like a low um, extremity and the lumbar uh, spine and the pelvis, they lose much more bone than the uh, uh, upper limb and the head. And uh, uh, this problem also uh, on the earth, for example, osteoporosis. And uh, uh, those, um, uh, this picture, I'm not sure. This picture is a 20 years old spine, and uh, this is a 40 years old spine. And uh, when people are getting older, older, their activity is reduced and uh, oxygen deficiency increased. And it is 60 uh, years old and up to 80 years old. Uh, bone loss, uh, not only the density, but also integrity uh, breakdown. So that's why people getting a fracture in the spine and they get shorter and shorter when the aging uh, going up. So under mechanical loading and uh, the uh, uh, fracture site also is not uniformly uh, over the bone, uh, only at the weak points. So when we talk about mechanical stimulation, what about the, the um, amount we need to maintain uh, bone health? So then we did the study, which is uh, uh, the x-axis is the daily loading cycles, and the y-axis is the um, uh, mechanical uh, amount put into the bone, and we, have, we can have a curve. That means uh, if we have a fewer cycles, we need a high magnitude to maintain bone mass. If we get the very high uh, frequency induced cycles, and then we can only need to require the, um, a very low um, amount of uh, mechanical stimulation. So below that, we get a bone loss. Above that, we have a new bone formation. And then uh, along this curve, we can maintain uh, bone health. Another uh, point is that uh, the um, uh, muscle may have a signal input into the bone, and especially in the high-frequency uh, domain. 
So uh, this is the curve which uh, we measure the, uh, the muscle uh, frequency among 27 years old female. And you can see the signal from 20 hertz to 50 hertz. They have a very rich signal around uh, this range. However, if we um, uh, measure 73 years old uh, female, and uh, those high frequency signal uh, almost uh, completely gone. So this uh, phenomenon may be uh, also apply in space because um, uh, muscle activity is reduced um, because the muscle and the bone is a very small tissue. They don't require uh, those signals. They just uh, uh, this kind of uh, mitigate those signals. So then uh, we use those uh, high frequency signal into a bunch of uh, uh, clinical usage. This is an early stage uh, osteoporosis young patient, and uh, they are uh, develop bone loss at their um, uh, young age. If we put mechanical stimulation through the, uh, the heel into their whole body, we call the whole body vibration, and we can prevent this kind of a loss. And this is an elderly osteoporosis patient, and the same thing for one year and two year study, and uh, the uh, uh, mechanical loaded um, subjects, they have uh, almost like a 200% increase than the uh, uh, placebo group. And uh, for those uh, uh, patient, young patient, they have um, um, like a uh, needed to have uh, chemo or radiation treatment for cancer. And uh, one consequence is that, that they bone, their bone kind of are getting uh, uh, lost after treatment. So then we can give them a pre-treated uh, for mechanical stimulation and uh, also give them some stimulation during their uh, chemo and uh, radiation treatment. And also effect uh, is pretty good to maintain their, their bone mass. And uh, we do have uh, a bad rest study. So this is a 90 days uh, bed rest study. And uh, the uh, subjects lay down on bed for three months. And all the uh, activity has to be taken care of on the bed. And we give uh, the um, uh, experimental group like a, a heel strike for mechanical stimulation. And then we can see the um, We can see the, uh, um, without stimulation, their bones uh, kept down quite uh, about 2% uh, per month uh, uh, bone loss. However, if we uh, treat it, the, uh, the heel bone seems uh, getting uh, uh, gain bone at the, the um, uh, local side um, uh, heel. So we can have a very good correlation uh, to uh, simulate. Then uh, if we move to the cellular work, and uh, because uh, bone is kind of uh, embedded um, into mineral tissue, and the cell all cast it over there, so then uh, if we have uh, mechanical loading, uh, bone cell may sense this kind of a mechanical signal. So then we use a, a model, so-called a muscle uh, pump model, and we try to uh, um, give a muscle st some stimulation and to see if we can enhance the bone flu flow in the cortical bone and to see the, uh, the results. So the animal model we use is a so-called tail suspension. And we did a bunch of uh, the um, frequency spectrum analysis, put the, the uh, uh, pressure transducer into the bone and load it from one hertz to 10 hertz. Then we pick up optimized signal around the three hertz and then we load it into the bone. And uh, animal is uh, suspended. The high limb um, is uh, not touched to the ground for a month. And then after a month, we take a look at their bone uh, change. So this is a kind of uh, the uh, results we got. Uh, this is a control group. And uh, age match is also the control group. And uh, for the uh, high limb suspension, which is their high limb, not touched to the ground, they get a bone loss about 35% down. And uh, just the hydrostatic uh, uh, pressure won't be able to mitigate this loss. However, if we put a dynamic loading, and uh, we can uh, completely uh, 
mitigate bone loss induced by uh, disuse uh, hind limb suspension. So this is kind of a results um, uh, we look at. This is a bone volume fraction compared to control and uh, hind limb suspension and also the loading. And we can see the um, uh, almost 100% recover uh, bone loss induced by disuse. And the other uh, parameter also uh, get similar train, like uh, the um, uh, bone volume fraction and uh, the, uh, the space uh, uh, connectivity and uh, trabecular number. And uh, another uh, mechanism for a cellular uh, response to the mechanical stimulation is a stem cell. So the stem cell could change to um, uh, chondrocytes, can change to uh, the um, uh, fat, also can change the bone cell. So if we can boost up the bone cell activity uh, by the mechanical stimulation, then that's the pathway to turn the other stem cell into the bone cell. So then we have a, a animal study designed a series for three days, seven days, 14 days, and 21 days. And uh, then we can have the results. Uh, three days, no change between disuse and uh, uh, loaded uh, bone. And uh, seven days, also no change. However, uh, two weeks, and we can see the uh, loaded bone compared to non-loaded bone, and uh, they have a significant change compared to the uh, age match. They almost uh, recover the, uh, the stem cell activity. And after uh, three weeks or four weeks, stem cell just uh, quiet down for both uh, disuse and then uh, loaded. And this is a train. And we also deal with uh, uh, some uh, uh, cellular uh, casted into the uh, cortical bone. We call it osteocytes mechanosensory. And uh, the, um, uh, those um, um, very fine cells is that indicate this is normal uh, bone cell. And uh, after we uh, have uh, suspension or disuse, they reduced. And then uh, uh, even reduced more after the um, um, exogen deficiency. And then, but after we load it, and the bone cell seems uh, uh, gain back for shape and the connectivity. So uh, I just want to compare uh, the data, which is uh, the uh, um, disuse induced uh, bone loss, bone cell loss. However, when we put the, the uh, stimulation and uh, we gain the bone back. Okay, so as we said, uh, mechanical signal frequency is an important issue. So even we put a bone at the same amount, when we load it at the low frequency compared to high frequency, high frequency could enhance 100% more uh, than the uh, low frequency uh, loading. So then we put the bone into the cellular um, activity, and we see the uh, osteocytes calcium oscillation response to uh, mechanical signals. And then within that, we have uh, different frequency, 1 hertz, 5 hertz, 10 hertz, and 20 hertz loading, and the high frequency, 10 hertz and 20 hertz uh, um, result in a, a positive uh, uh, feedback and a calcium uh, response. When we uh, put the um, um, so-called one pathway called the um, uh, beta containing and the wind signaling, and uh, this even the uh, 10 hertz loading uh, can enhance the bone uh, calcium activity, but this pathway seems uh, uh, mitigate uh, such kind of uh, the loading response. So then we can design our uh, protocol to uh, further check the um, um, molecular and the cellular signaling pathway into the, uh, uh, this mechanism. So with that, I think a mechanical uh, loading 
provide me mechanism for skeletal tissue adaptation, include the antibiotic and the mitigate of bone loss and the muscle atrophy, and the possible uh, modulate immediately biomechanical or biochemical response related to the uh, energy and the loading frequency and uh, optimized frequency at the high frequency, 10 to 60 hertz, looks like a promising uh, data for maintaining bone mass. With that, um, this uh, work is kind of a supported by National uh, Space Biomedical Research Institute and uh, uh, NASA and the NIH. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. The yeah, next speaker will uh, Petra Hedberg from the DAR. Thank you. So, good morning. Uh, human spaceflight is very exciting and it's connected to several challenges. We have heard about technological challenges, medical, but also psychological challenges. I would like to draw your attention to another aspect which is also very important, and that's microbiology. Microbes live on Earth since at least 3.5 billion years. Microbial mats are among the oldest signs of life we can find on Earth, and they are also the first signs of life we might find on other planets or moons in our solar system and beyond. Microorganisms account for more than 99% of all living biomass on Earth today. They are an in integral component of our environment and colonize all inviolable niches. Microorganisms live on and in the human body in form of ecological communities, which can be commensal, mutualistic, symbiotic, or pathogenic. And they share our body space uh, in every niche possible. We have uh, 10 times more microbial cells in and on our body than we have human cells. Here you can see a map uh, of what was known in the year of 2013 about the diversity of the human microbiome. Micro the microbiome describes the whole community of organ microorganisms living on and in us. I don't want to into go into too much detail, but depending on the specific location on and in the human body, very differ different specific microbial communities are living there. Most of them do not do any harm. We need many of them for our well-being, but some can also be pathogenic, uh, meaning they can cause diseases. When we go into space, we will bring microbes with us, so we cannot avoid them. And in space, in a space station or in a spacecraft heading, for example, to Mars, the humans, but also the microbes, are living in a confined habitat. These microbes can have or have different effects either on materials. Many bacteria tend to attach to the surfaces and form biofilms. Some are able to induce biocorrosion of materials, others are able to degrade polymers. And these can induce risks for technological systems and in the long run for the whole mission success. In addition, microbes have different effects on humans. They can cause infections. Um, they can produce toxins, which are bad for us, but we need them also for the fermentation of some fibers in our food. Microbes influence our immune system. They are able, and they are doing this, they synthesize vitamins, um, and they can metabolize xenobiotics. And there are many other different effects, and in the last 10 years, we learned more and more about the effects of microbes on the human health because just now we have very specific, new, and powerful omics technologies which were not available 10 years or 20 years ago. In addition, when we are going to long-term space missions, we need to have some life support systems based also on biology, and also there, microbes are very important. We can use them to degrade waste. We have heard about this. Uh, they are used to, or they can be used to regenerate air, and they can produce edible biomass. And just now there's, or there was an ongoing session about life support systems in the other room here. 
So microbes can have positive effects, but also negative effects. In any case, we cannot avoid them in our long-term space missions. I would like to give you a very short example of what we are doing in our institute. And I would like to mention a few results of our participation in the Mars 500 experiment. This was a 520-day isolation study simulating a manned Mars mission. It was done by Russia in cooperation with ESA. In our experiment called MICHA, Microbial Ecology of Confined Habitats and Human Health, we wanted to monitor the microbial bioburden and biodiversity inside the Mars 500 habitat. We studied the natural colonization on surfaces as well as in the air and the changes over the whole 520 days. We identified the microbes um, on one hand by cultivation methods, on the other hand by molecular methods. We looked especially for potentially pathogenic organisms and we looked at the gut microbiome of the crew members which were isolated in this study. And this work was done um, by my group here at um, DLR in Cologne in cooperation with many other colleagues, mainly from Italy, and they were led by Francesco Canganella. It's only a very few examples of our cultivation results. You can see here um, an overview of the different modules inside the Mars 500 habitat, the medical module, the habitable modu module, and the utility module. And um, this is an overview of the microbes we found in these modules on the surfaces. There are some groups of microbes common to all of these modules. We call this the core microbiome. But there are also very specific differences between the different modules. For example, in this one, the diversity is very low, whereas in the habitable module, the diversity is very high. And in each module, we have a specific microbial community. Another example from Mars 500 is the investigation of the gut microbiome of the crew members. You can see here um, numbers representing the different crew members and a very raw sketch of uh, visualization of the gut microbiome and its changes over time. On the left-hand side is the start of the isolation period, and on the right-hand side of each of these um, figures, the end of the isolation period. I don't want to into details, but you can see here on the first look, the gut microbiome can be very diverse, and it can be very different between the individual crew members and there are changes over the long period of isolation. We are just still on the way to analyzing many data we have from this study. To summarize here, um, bio burden and biodiversity fluctuations were, uh, could be observed in this uh, long-term study over time and uh, also at different sampling locations in the habitat. Nearly all values, however, were within the limits set, for example, for the ISS. Uh, the bio burden was not increased compared, for example, to a per two-person household in Germany or at different locations at DLR. The different modules inside the habitat differ in their microbial community structure. As to be expected, the molecular study um, indicated greater phylogenetic di diversity than only cultivation. We found uh, mainly human-associated microorganisms, um, 81 potential pathogens, and there was a very high interpersonal variability in the human gut microbiota, and the steady-state-based dynamics are unique for each um, individual in this study. At the end, I would like uh, to mention briefly another aspect where microbiology is very important, and this is another example of our institute. It's from uh, the department from Ruth Hemmersbach, working with Klaus Henslage. They are developing subsystems for, the support, for life support in extreme environments, which can also be used for vertical farming or which can be tested in compact satellites. Here is one example. It's a small experiment which will be flown on a German satellite called Eukropis. And in this system, they test um, to degrade human uh, urine by, uh, with the help of microbial communities in space. Uh, and I think the launch will be next year. 
So to summarize, <coughs> the collection of bio burden and biodiversity data from the crew, from the spacecraft environment, and from bioregenerative life support systems is essential to develop strategies to maintain a non-hazardous environment for the astronauts' health during long-term manned space missions. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any question to the panelist? But I wonder if we the please. Oh, thank you, thank you very much for a very nice talk, and uh, it's a very interesting and stimulative. And I'm from Japan, and I have a question about uh, Dr. Lee, and who is in, uh, in charge of the development of a CEROS system. Yes, and uh, according to my understandings, CEROS is a science of material circulation. We have to establish the material circulation and for every element and molecule, even though it is a small amount, okay? And from that viewpoint, and I would like to ask you, and what kind of materials is circulated in your, in your systems? This is the first one. And your system is included in animal habitat for getting some kind of animal protein or something like that. The third one, how about the treatment of the urine or a feces. It, can, it, it was uh, circulated. That was my three questions. Can you understand? It's clear for you? Thanks for your question. It's about just uh, recycle uh, it's not my background, but we know we have two parts of the materials. One is by, uh, uh, one is by film, a special film to the, 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 the uh, 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 with a film, the, uh, something can glue password filter. And another one is by uh, biology. So we have two parts for the rooming and for the face. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, as far as I understand from your bio uh, biograph, and uh, maybe and the water is recycled, was recycled. Yeah, maybe the, uh, the echo. It seems uh, very, very strong. So Dr. Lee cannot hear the question clearly. Yes, Maybe yes, better sir, if you can, can come to hear. Yes, that would be I can. Yes, I can okay. answer. I can listen. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I ask you, and what kind of material is uh -huh. saturated? Saturated. And carbon dioxide, and ox uh, oxygen, or the uh, water. Yes, yes. We, we have materials. We have water is recycled, mm -hmm. and also for the airs recycle. Yes. And how about the other element? Uh, nitrogen. When you uh, raise a plant in your system, you need a nitrogen. Yes. Okay. We control all of elements for the for the carbons. We know that one, but the uh, CO2. And the audience is violent, is violence, and uh, the, another the, uh, element is controlled the safety for the people. We we could uh, modify that elements. Now how about the animal? An animal. animal is included in your system, not I'm only a uh, crew. No, animal. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no. We uh, uh, we only have insects not other animals. Mm -hmm. for the but uh, you know that for our daily uh, food, you know that we need a protein from yes. animal. And yes. then, then that kind of species should be included in that system. And my, my second question is, uh, yes, uh, 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 
no, no, third question. And how about the treatment of feces and urine? Yes, the feces and the urine is be filtered. Some is for the water, mm -hmm. transport water, and some parts is for the, uh, uh, the, the, for the materials for the plants. Mm -hmm. And the urine and the feces contains the various materials which can, which can be reused. And then the, that is a, a very important problem. And uh, yeah, the reason why I asked you mm -hmm. is, uh, yes, we in Japan and conducted the same kind of experiment. Mm -hmm. And uh, not for the space application, but for the uh, 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 research on the circulation of radioactive material on ground. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we established and maintained every material circulation. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very complicated system yes. to maintain. Yes, yes. And uh, we conducted that uh, maybe in a shorter time, just uh, 60 days. But uh, we succeeded maybe uh, 10 or uh, 12 years ago. Yes, it's, yes. it's more complicated. Yeah. Uh, it's more complicated a system. Yes, so for this uh, system, we, for the long time, we must keep the system working. Everything is controlled as we designed it, yes. But yeah. in, our, in our system, we only have insects, not other animals. For the protein, the people, we, uh, with this experiment, it's not total food can be re regeneration in the cabin, just about uh, uh, except, animal, uh, is, except protein. Mm -hmm. We give the people like astronaut food, mm -hmm. but others we can regeneration in the cabins. Mm -hmm. Then the same kind of system, just like uh, uh, Bio3, Bio3 in... Bio3, Bio3. Okay, and all, all the projects in, in, in Russia. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much because the time is so limited. But anyway, this Chinese uh, uh, closed the eco life support ecological life support system is closed. Closed the system, but it is open to the all of the world to attend, to pay visit. Yeah, welcome all of the foreign uh, other countries, the scientists uh, make a collaboration with us. Another thing that I want to uh, declare one important thing, because we will have uh, the 21st uh, International Academy of Astronautics uh, Humans in Space Symposium. We will be held in November 27 to November 30 in Shenzhen in Shenzhen, China, just, uh, Shenzhen, just the location of the, this Chinese uh, uh, closed ecological life support system location. They are welcome to China to attend the uh, next 21st symposium, uh, Human in Space Symposium and visit our uh, 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 closed ecological life support system base. Thank you very much, because we have to end it. We have maybe another activity, continue to use this room. Thank you very much for your attending. Thank you.